Well, hello everyone. We are live again, uh, this time for our Friday devotional. Um, you get me again, not Pastor Jess. I think she's only done one. Uh, she's been really busy with a lot of kids stuff and extra side things. She has a lot of youth meetings and whatnot. I know that the the larger church doesn't always see uh you know, Pastor Jess and, and all of her different forms of what she's doing, even on Sundays, often upstairs with the kids and doing all those things. Uh, but uh, note that she's very much present and uh, out in front doing a lot of things. The, the idea of the Friday devotional is actually to give us a place where we can kind of interact with you still in some format because we know that the digital format is really tricky. We don't get to mingle with you guys in a regular Sunday gathering. We don't get to uh, see you guys out on all those, uh, you know, Wednesday nights and stuff like that like we used to. So, good morning, Deb. So that's just one of those things is uh, it's a place where we can kind of still see you. And it's it's something that I've actually really favored and really enjoyed. I, I do like the Friday devotional. So the fact that uh, Pastor Jess has been really busy and whatnot doing some of the other things and I've been uh, in front of the camera for these isn't so bad to me. I do like being there, but uh, I know that she misses you guys as well and would share that. Uh, she's uh, with us now in the comments. So is Pastor Brent. Good morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about, you may have seen it in the description above, we're going to talk about God's stick to it -iveness. It is a word. I looked it up. Though my spell check doesn't say it's a word, um, it's a word that I first heard from a friend of mine, uh, Dan Lee in Chaplo, uh, which is in the north, trust me, and uh, he would often talk about that tenacity, that uh, dogged perseverance, the stick to as he would say. And uh, when I was reading the scriptures that I want to bring to your attention today, it was stick to that came to mind. Stick to that I thought of. Um, what's the wow for, Pastor Brent, that I'm talking about Chaplo? You must know where that is. Uh, it's actually not too far from Wawa at all. 12 kids, Dan? I don't think he has 12 kids, Dan. D does, does Dan Lee have 12 kids? We should show him this video. Um, I thought he had three. Jess, Jess might know. Jess will know. 101. Yeah, that's the highway. That's it. Probably. <laughs> probably? <laughs> okay. Jess says probably. I think there's a big difference, but a bunch. Sure. A bunch. I've met some of them. I thought I met most of them. Apparently, I did not meet most of them. So, uh, anyway, good back and forth here, loving the conversation. Uh, we're going to play uh, two songs, is what I wanted to do today, that fit the theme of God's faithfulness, his stick to it his uh, uh, dogged perseverance, his tenacity, in two forms. Uh, and we have two scriptures today from Isaiah and Romans. The idea is simply this, God pursues you greatly with fullness, um, unrelenting force. He's pursuing your heart. And the second part is he's keeping you. He is keeping and sustaining you. Amen. So let's sing a couple of songs. The first one, um, I believe you know, called Yes and Amen. Not Yes and Amen. That's my second song. I'm going to play first um, Mighty to Save, right? how we came to know him, what he does, right? He's mighty to pursue us, find us, save us. Mighty to see. 
about his faithfulness it goes like this Father of kindness you have poured out grace you brought me out of darkness you have filled me with peace giver of mercy you're my help in time of need Lord I can't help
promises and my confidence. Do you believe this? Is your faithfulness sing I will rest in your promises and my confidence? Father God, we look to you knowing that you, you pursued our hearts, you cared for us greatly, and you continue to hold us in your arms through it all, that your promises are yes and amen, that your faithfulness is true, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Let us learn from your character. Let it grow within us as we stick to your spirit and understand and learn from your ways. Lord, we need that in our lives. Amen. Amen. Be blessed today. We're going to talk about a little bit of scripture. If you've read the notes, then you know that uh, there's a number of things uh, we can touch on in regards to, let me just adjust the chair, in regards to uh, this message. Uh, we have Isaiah and Romans. We're going to start in Isaiah. So if you want to get ready, you can grab your uh, Bible if you have it with you, and you're going to turn to Isaiah 30, uh, verse 18. I accidentally wrote 10. I'm going to edit that later. It's um, Isaiah 30, verse 18. Good morning, everyone. Tori Brown is there. Uh, Diane Ashley Paniscom. Good to see you, Diane. And uh, Jess is welcoming you. Uh, it's nice to see friends from all over gathering together um, for this uh, little gathering that we have, just a little Friday morning devotional. I will try not to keep you too long, but uh, I get excited sometimes, not only in song, but also when I'm reading God's Word in Scripture. And I pray that you do too. Um, I want you to have the same kind of passion for, yeah, the Dusty Bible. That's right. Um, I want you to have the same passion for Scripture that we have because it's it's like reading your favorite book. It's like watching your favorite movie. We want you to be like a fanboy or a fangirl of the things of God. And I don't think that that's a really crazy thing to say. I think that as you grow and learn and understand more about God, the more you should have an interest, the more that you should be excited about it. You know, I, I'm not saying go out and do some, you know, LARPing cosplay and dress up like Moses and walk the streets or anything like that. You know, we don't really have Bible conventions that way. At least I don't think we do. I hope we don't, uh, but get excited for it. Become a fan yeah, of what's happening. And I know that there's stories out there, you know, being a follower, not a fan, but get excited about the things of God. Fangirling here? Thanks, Jess. That's the idea. Just get excited about the things of God and let that be part of your life. I always say the best part about witnessing is when you just naturally get to know somebody, whether you're, you're in a waiting room, you know, a meter apart or two meters, whatever it is, whether you're in a waiting room or whether you're in a lineup or just meeting someone on the street, they, when you spark up conversation, they start to learn things about you. Usually the things on the surface, right? Things like 
what your favorite color is, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you're uh, someone like our friend uh, Lawrence Chatterton. You're dressed in full red. They're probably going to guess, oh, your favorite color is red. Um, maybe you have a dog with you. You're at a dog park. They know you love dogs. Maybe, um, you know, you're at a restaurant and you're in line to grab some food and they know your favorite food must be A1. I saw Mother's Day. A1 was lined up down the street and around the corner. Wow. Wow. I thought about going there. I didn't. But wow. I'm telling you. People re and it was raining too, so that was exciting. People really had a little blip there, but anyways, uh, with uh, with the connection. But I think I'm back and everyone's good. But all I'm saying is this: the best part of witnessing, and this is just a side note to our story, is let Jesus be at the forefront. Who you're sharing about, right? If people can already see that you're excited about something else, that you're a fan or a uh, you know, you cash into some part of our culture and people can pick that up and it's a conversation starter. Maybe Jesus is part of that conversation. Maybe Jesus is someone that you can bring up because you're just so excited about that, just like you're excited about Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or cars, right? It can come up in conversation when it's that natural, when it's that big of a part of your life. Okay, we're going to talk about the stick to of God. Again, I looked it up. Apparently, it's a word, 19th century, which isn't that long ago. Um, and it's a good word. I, I do like it. I like, I like making up words, and it's nice when someone else makes it up and I can use it. it. It feels a little more legitimate that way. So you're in Isaiah 30, Isaiah 30, 18. Like I said, I'll change that thing up top, 18. Simple says this, okay, I'm going to read from my Bible. This one's not dusty. Use it significantly more often. Uh, it says this, uh, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Isaiah 30, 18. Here's the thing. Um, and, and I'm going to read a little piece of a devotional here. But I want you to understand. God's pursuit of you and the broken nation of Israel is so strong and real, like we sang about in Mighty to Save, that it is hard to avoid a gospel message. It is there. It is around. I believe that we have spread the gospel as humanity across the globe in most places. I get that there are remote, you know, islands or tribes in the Amazon and whatever else that have not been contacted by any other civilization, but any civilization that has found and been contacted outside of themselves, let a foreigner in in any form, has heard about Jesus. This message has spread very far, and I believe that it's something that once heard, you can't ignore, because something happens in your heart. As a human being, even if you're it's not your language. It's not your thing. It's not your culture. You are one of those tribes, and you have heard from about this Jesus. Something about the name of the Lord, when hitting your ears, pricks your spirit and your heart, because God is just an amazing, loving force that is pursuing this world and pursued you at one point. Let me read this uh, little devotional piece about the Israelites. So despite the Israelites' constant sin and rebellion, God remained faithful and true. He never gave up on them. In spite of our constant sin and rebellion, you know uh, what that means in your life, and I'm sure that you can relate. You can pick something there. Um, God remains faithful and true to us. He won't give up on us either. God not only forgives our sins, he forgets them. He wipes the slate clean. He just We just need to ask. God not only extends love to us, he is love. God emanates from his very core love, and it pulsates through his relationship with us because God is infinitely loving and faithful to others, um, and he offers us, sorry, complete forgiveness. So understand that, that your first interaction with God Almighty might have been a story, a witnessing, a church uh, service or program, but your first interaction with God Almighty would have been a pursuing love that pricked your heart. And I believe that that love continues in your life 
and does something very special, which leads us to our next portion. So I'm going to read um, Romans 8, 38 and 39. This scripture is really special for me. Um, when I was a youth, I went to uh, the Overflow Conference uh, that they had. I don't even know if it was called Overflow then. It probably was. Um, but we knew that it was called Youth Convention, like every other province had. And we went to it. It it was my grade ninth year, got a t-shirt, and I remember going up to one of the worship team members and talking to them about, because I was a musician and I really like how they played and, you know, I was, I was kind of doing that whole fanboy thing a little bit, a little bit. I remember saying, hey, I really care about what you guys do. I think the speaker was there and I, you know, his message really touched my heart. And they signed my shirt, which was kind of cool. And they wrote a scripture. They wrote this scripture, Romans 8, 38 and 39. And it soon became one of the scriptures that really defined me. Stanley has three boys, maybe five, says Ruth Cusick. Okay, there you go. I trust Ruth. That's probably true. See, that's a number I thought. Twelve. A dozen? Really? Anyway. All right, here we go. Even in adversity, I want to read about how God's love continues to pursue us. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It doesn't take a genius to understand what the scripture is saying. There is nothing no thing at all in this world under God's creation, whether evil or good, nothing can separate you from that stick to that pursuit of God's love in your life. It's the same great loving force that came and found you in your brokenness and brought you into relationship with Jesus. And it continues to work in you, in you, in so much that everything you face, it's not going to cut you away from God. You know, I know people that when they first get saved, they're so excited and it's good. They do the fanboy, fangirl thing and it's great. And when we get to a place of maybe messing up, dropping the ball, doing something wrong, sinning, okay? We think, oh, God has abandoned me. I've done something wrong. I didn't fit the bill. I, I disobeyed a rule, a commandment. I must not be loved. That's not what scripture says. It's not what Paul writes about. It's not true. What we know is truth is that God continues to love you through it all. Story of the prodigal son. Give me my share of the inheritance. I'm leaving. I want none of this. I'm going to go and live my best life without you. The father never stopped loving his son. Always waited to see him coming down the road again. And then came to meet him before he was even home. Nothing separates you from God's love. And if we think that something is separating us from God's love, that conviction in our heart, then cut it out. Whatever that thing is, get it out of your life. It's not actually separating you. Conviction just means it's not good for you. Condemnation would be to separate, but we don't separate. The Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you. It, it gives you that little prick of the heart, convicting your spirit, saying, I need to do something about what's in my life. But no matter what, no matter what, nothing separates you from God's love. Let me read again just a little bit of the devotional based on this scripture. See, it's written by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul suffered all sorts of hardships. You can read about it. Honestly, he did. All sorts of hardships, persecution. And still, he knew that nothing could separate him from God's love. 
Nothing has changed. Hardship and heartache is our lot in life. We know that. It's a broken world. We don't know what God is orchestrating behind the scenes, right? In our lives. And we can be assured of his love. We don't know the reasons for the things that happen to us, but we can remember that God is has our best in mind. No matter what, he has our best in mind. When trouble comes, we will come to grips with the fact that God is present, working behind the scenes with the big picture purpose in mind. His love endures forever and pursues you through thick and thin everything you're facing. God does not let go of us once we've allowed him into our lives. He sticks by us through every element, the good and the bad, uh, it can be easy to ignore him sometimes, and I challenge you not to. This is why I started off by that whole witnessing story, becoming a fanboy, fangirl, where you're just, you know, obviously you're a follower, not just a fan, but I really want you to grasp that it's okay to get excited about Jesus and to wear him outside of your internal, to allow people around you to see that that's part of your life for a reason. It can be easy to think that he's abandoned us in the hardest of times, but he's there strengthening us through it all. And I am not going to read a poem about footprints in the sand. I am just going to say, God will carry you through. He's strengthening you. Amen? Your identity is found in Jesus Christ, not in this world. So don't start seeking it in other places. If you're struggling with something while you're isolating or being alone and you're thinking, I, I don't know what to do. This is very hard for me. I need companionship, friendship, something. Note that your greatest companion in all existence in this universe is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And he is with you, not only in the room right now, but through all of this pursuing you, loving you, and continuously wanting that companionship. So seek first him before anything else. I know that things can be hard that we get desperate for, for that companionship or friends or loved ones. Maybe you want to see family, all these things. But we're going to stick through this because Jesus, because he's with us and always showing us the greatest love, greater than any person or human ever could, right? And that's where we find our satisfaction. That's where we find our, our wholesomeness. We are not broken outside of him. It does say that it is good for humanity not to be alone, but truly we have companionship with him near us, with us. And that's something that I don't want you to neglect through this whole time. Cling to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Cling to him. Depend on him. He is your greatest need fulfilled. Amen? Let's pray, and I'll let you go to enjoy the rest of your Friday. But let's just have a moment of prayer that we are leaning on him, allowing him into our hearts, and really recognizing that he is sticking by us, pursuing us like he did. Dear Heavenly Father, we look to you as an example of tenacity, perseverance, stick to itiveness. God, we look to you as someone who we can see never ceases to love. There is nothing that stands in your way when it comes to your greatest creation, your masterpiece, your workmanship, us. So God, we accept your love like we did before. When you pursued us greatly through our hardest times in our darkness, when we were just in the midst of sin, you reached down, you showed us your love, your compassion, your power. You pulled us out of darkness into marvelous light. And I pray that we look to you to continue to keep us in the light, to keep, to flood us uh, with your love so that it permeates our soul, our being, who we are, and actually shines through us to everyone around us, that we can spread the joy and love that you continue to pour into us each and every day that's fresh and every morning. We can give that to all that we see and know around us. God, sustain us. Keep us strong as we feel alone or we feel distant from friends, from love, from family, and sometimes from you. Show us your presence afresh in our rooms and wherever we are. We need to know that you're close. I thank you, God, 
that you are unrelenting and continue to show us your love, that nothing separates us from you. Not this, not a thing. Lord, we just rededicate ourselves to that relationship to know you more. We know that you care for us greatly. Let us let you in to those parts of our lives that maybe we didn't think to let you in yet. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you so much for sticking with us uh, through all of this, that we are people who continue to rely on the Lord as our guide. And uh, we'll continue to be here with you through it all, through thick and thin. God bless you and take care.